Hey sweeties, I'm Caitlin Matheson and today we're back showing you how I make a beautiful buttercream piped vintage style cake. We've got some white and pale pink colours going on today and we're going to be topping them with some vibrant red cherries. If you'd like to see more, keep on watching but also let me know in the comments below what videos you'd like to see next. I've just gone ahead and made some buttercream icing in my KitchenAid bowl and I've actually mixed together our vegan buttercream and our standard buttercream. But if you're making this at home, you can just add less butter than you normally would, just to reduce that yellow color. I'm wanting quite a pure look on this cake, so I want it as white as possible, so I've had to lower our butter content, just to make it nice and bright. So as you can see, it's pretty bright compared to a standard buttercream that is quite yellow. Just go ahead and add a big blob to the top of the cake as always. Don't be afraid to add too much buttercream because we are going to scrape some off. And I'm just going to take my favourite Ateco offset spatula and slowly turn the turntable while spreading out that icing. Just scrape most of that off but don't be too particular because we are going to come back over the top later. And take a big mound of icing and start pushing that onto the sides of the cake. Because of the curvature of the round cake tin, you will scrape off and hit the crumb. So add a lot more than you think because you don't want to do that and have to keep adding more icing if you can avoid it. Perfect. Now that I've got a lot of icing on there, I'm going to take my straight scraper and I'm just going to gently start smoothing around the cake and turning that turntable. Just be careful here not to take too much icing off at once. Because of the shape, it is a lot more tedious than a round cake. So we just need to go slow and steady and ensure we keep those edges. If there's any places that you scraped off too much, just go in and add a little bit more icing. You want to go ahead with your spatula and start bringing in that top edge. Now that we've got our cake nice and smooth, I'm just going to take some of that same white buttercream and I'm taking my Colour Mill Candy Food Coloring. Just give that a shake. Now I'm just going to add literally one drop of this because I want the palest pink colour. So just be really careful because it is liquid. I'm going to mix that in. So when a client wants a really, really pale colour, just go really slow and steady and just literally add one single drop at a time because if you add too much, it's going to be too late and you can't turn it back unless you have a spare buttercream. This piping tip doesn't have any particular brand, but it's just a standard normal size leaf tip. And lastly, I just have a number two from Loyal, just to add some nice little dots on the cake. I'm just going to take my biggest star tip and start with the bottom border first, just so I have some bearings of where I want to pipe. I always start at the back of the heart, just so I can make sure that the front is nice and smooth and free flowy. Squeeze nice and evenly and taper off as you pull to the left. I then usually go ahead and do the top edge border in the same tip because I just feel like it looks better when you're doing the vintage inspired cakes to keep them nice and consistent. So I'm going to go ahead and pipe that top edge in the same tip now. I usually start the top edge on the front corner instead just so I can make sure it's nice and pointy. Now that our top and bottom borders are on, I'm just going to go ahead with the light pink with the smaller tip and just do another layer just above that initial bottom row. Now I'm going ahead with that leaf tip to make some ruffles. This is the fun part. So you're going to start at the back and you need to do this by eye, but if you're not very good at doing things by eye because you're still learning, just go ahead and put some pin marks so you can get an idea where your swags are going to go. You want to slowly push back and forth with your hand just to make it nice and roughly and then reconnect back to the top as you can see there. Now you need to try and make them all the same size, which is the hard part. You will learn and keep doing more and more things. I'm going ahead now with the light pink again in that same tip, and I'm going to add an inside layer to the top. Now I'm going to add just a few finishing touches to the sides. So what I'm going to do is I just want to cover where these swags are connecting. If you get some buttercream on the end of your tip, it will ruin how that piping does come out. So make sure if you get that a little bit messy, just make sure you wipe it, keep it nice and clean. Now I'm just going to start with doing one big swoop coming up and over the top just to cover that swag. Then I'm going to go ahead and just add a smaller one on each side of the pink. As you can see, those pipings just finish off the sides perfectly, neatens it up a little bit. I am just going to add a few pipe dots with that number two tip, just to fill that space coming down from those swags. I like to go in usually with three dots, and I start with the biggest one and then go smaller. And you can just change the pressure of the bag with the same size tip. To you! So before we add the writing, I'm going to go ahead and start draining our cherries. 
They do come in a liquid, so you want them to sit out for at least 10 minutes, just so they're not too wet when you add them onto the buttercream icing, because they'll slip and slide. You will always have some in the jar that come without stem, so I usually just remove those first, so you don't damage the ones underneath with your spoon. This is only a small cake, so I only need six cherries. When they come out of the jar, they are very wet, so you just want to blot them with some paper towel. Just be really gentle with this, because they are soft, because they've already been pitted as well, so they do have a hole in them. And then I usually just move them around on the paper towel so you can rotate them and get as much juice off as you can. Now that you have your cherries as dry as possible, just put them off to the side and still leave them on the paper towel just so they can continue to dry while we add our writing on our cake. So I usually like to have a look at my cake before I go ahead and add the cherries because once they're on, they've got to stay in that same spot. So I usually just map out with my piping bag without actually touching the cake, just trying to get an idea of where I'm going to put them on before I pipe. So I've worked out exactly where I'm going to put them. I'm going to have three on each side. And I'm going to go ahead with that pink and just do a small swirl around in a circle just to give our cherry a little base to sit on. I'm going to go ahead and add my fondant writing that I cut out about 30 minutes prior. I like it to be nice and dry or at least semi-dry so then you can pick up the numbers easily and place them on the cake. I like to go in and add the bottom line first or the numbers, the bigger style of fonts, so then you can get a base of where you can put your name. When you add your cherries, just keep in mind that they do have the hole, so you always want that either facing to the bottom or to the back, and then you just want to sit them gently on your soft buttercream. I usually have the bigger ones towards the back, and then the smaller ones on the side. And just like that, we have our vintage cake. As you can see, it came out so gorgeous, and you can see how easily this is to adapt with any colour scheme. I'd love to hear your feedback of what you'd like to see next, so please leave a comment down below. I've also been busy making lots of cakes on live on TikTok, so come join me over there at Caitlin Matheson and watch these creations come to life. As always, I'd appreciate if you give me a like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Stay sweet.